walk with when me. Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a strange language. Judah was in his sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea saw it and fled, and Jordan was driven back. The mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like lambs. What ailed thee, O thou sea? What fleddest that thou fleddest? Thou Jordan, that thou was driven back? Ye mountains, that ye skipped like rams, and ye little hills like lambs. Tremble thou earth at the presence of the I Am, at the presence of the God of Jacob which turned the rock into a standing water, the flint into fountains of water. Psalms chapter 114. Deliver me from the hands of evil spirits who have sway over the thoughts of men's hearts and let them not lead me astray from thee, my God. Establish thou me in my seed forever that we go not astray from henceforth and forevermore. Jubilees chapter 12 and verse 20. Yes, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, those of you on this prop platform and those shared platforms. We thank God for you. You're walking with Mr. Clay. I'm Mr. Clay. Yes, yes, and with a big hand clap of praise, we thank God for those of you who have followed us since the beginning and those of you that have been with us here and thereafter and here and there's about. And we thank God for those of you who have just subscribed or followed. And we thank God for you that are about to subscribe or follow, calling those things that are not as though they are. Yes, all praises to the Most High, even the I Am that I Am. Yes, 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 a beautiful day, another beautiful day. I always say I'm going to take a little break from this every now and then, but it's, it's hard. Not when you got the Most High just pressing upon your heart. To read scripture or to share scripture in any kind of way or capacity, there's no one but the Most High upon your heart because people cannot endure sound doctrine cannot endure it sound teaching it comes straight from the source it's, it's, it's hard for many especially when you're so used to hearing people's opinion and uh, all these things that really are irrelevant to what God is trying to tell us his statutes commandments ordinances and laws yes by this a woman will be a good wife by this a man would be a providing a good father even a loving husband by this, nations will live in harmony and people will be blessed. Yes, statutes, commandments, laws, and ordinances of the Most High. Yes, for all we have to do is praise Him. The angels do it every day. They do it hour upon hour. And there's not a moment going by where God is not receiving praise from His audience in His realm or wherever He's at. We don't, we vaguely understand it, but we understand it somewhat. According to the English, it's around his throne, but it's got to be more than that, something that we don't understand. We just don't understand it. Some say he's an alien. Some say he's going to come in spaceships and all those other things. <laughs> well, we shall see. Nassau even said they figured him out. Yeah, whatever. You know, God is who can know God by trying to figure him out but that you understand and know God see this is a problem even in marriages and relationships why do we try to figure people out you trying to figure your wife out it, it hurts you you trying to figure your husband out it hurts you but the fact is to understand and know each other is the biggest thing and if you know someone you can tell if they're doing something wrong if they have ill will, how do I know someone? How do I try to understand someone? First, you understand their character. You try to, you, you try to make sense of the character that they have. Why are they so nice? Why are they so cooperative? Is it a fake or is it is it real? Are they consistent in what the way they are now? These things should be a question to you. And you know, in, 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 many, in many ways, people can't pretend for a long time, but the fact is, is that usually they're going to give up. Sometimes you might want to see what they're going to say, not, not in a harsh way, but push a little button here and there, according to as you see their character and see how they react to it. But then again, you on the opposite side do the same. 
whether you laugh about it or come up with a situation where you talk about it. I mean, these things, you're going to be at variance with each other at some point in time. But the fact is, is that in relationships, as long as we got an understanding and we know, we know what? This person is consistent in their love or their respect for me. Or this person is, in cons is consistent when we're around their friends and they don't put me down or they don't start acting like they're the boss and the big cheese and everything. They're always paying me some attention at different functions and whatever we have to do. People know that I love her and for her end, she loves me. Now, these things are important to both ends. Makes a man feel like a man and that he can walk over mountains, make a woman feel like she could just, she's a flower in a field, beautiful, that stands out among many. Yes. Yes, yeah, some of you probably experienced me on social media, but the fact is, I'm going to tell it like it is. I'm going to call a buck a buck. I done seen a lot. I ain't, I ain't just been around the block. I wasn't just born today. But nevertheless, let us get into it. We're in the book of Jasher, the book of Jasher, chapter 90, as you prepare, chapter 90. Now, we have two chapters left, this chapter plus verse chapter 91, I believe. And this has been a very good book, very informing. I mean, some people, they I've gotten emails or whatever saying this and that, but I just don't pay them no mind because the fact is most people that talk, they're regurgitating things that come from somewhere else. Someone is being blessed by the laws, by obeying the statutes, laws, and commandments of the Most High. That's history by itself. That's it. That's history, it's truth, it's whatever. Now, you got in the New Testament where they defy God in many ways that we don't even know. In subtle ways. And you have to figure these ways out by knowing who God is and understanding who God is. This is all God asks of you. Because by knowing... You know what's required of you, and by understanding, you will depart from evil that would offend the Most High. Now, chapter 90, the book of Jasher, verse 1. At that time in the fifth year after the children of Israel had passed over Jordan. Now, they already got into the land. They already conquered a great portion of the land of Canaan, which they call Palestine today whatever but anyway it's really the land of Shem that from the Euphrates all the way to the brook of Egypt which is denial all belongs to Israel but God had took it away from Israel because of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and those other ones that pertain to it too those other scriptures that pertain to Deuteronomy chapter 28 now he says that after the children of Israel had passed over Jordan, after the children of Israel had rested. See, from all of that, when a man way, ways please the most high, what happens? Even his enemies is at peace with him. Yes. When your ways start to please the most high, you can't do all the commandments. Not right now, you can't. You can't you can't sacrifice goats, lambs, bullocks. You, you God don't that's the out of the order of most high. You can't just go up there and fry or uh, put a uh, lamb chop or a leg of lamb on it because they didn't break his bones. Come on here, man. Let's call it like it is. They didn't break his bone, but they set it in on skewer and then they rolled it over fire. And each family, they would shut themselves up in the house during the Passover and they ate off the lamb itself until they were full. And that which was left over, they burned with fire the next day. After. The angel that caused death came through the land, taking even the firstborn of Egypt. Now, I always make sense of this old English because it's very tricky. And it can get you to believe in seeing a thing that's not there. Now, let us continue. Now, Israel had rested from their war with the Canaanites at that time great and severe battles arose between Edom and the children of Chittim and the children of Chittim fought against Edom now see this is these are two people Edom was Shemites you're in the land of Shem now this is a land that was allotted to Shem 
all the way, that whole part of Africa, which we call the Middle East, that belonged to Shem. I mean, it's just, it is just what it is. Even though Esau was there and everything else, that belonged to Shem. They were black folks, if you want to put it that way. There were no white folks there at that time. No. They came because of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Yes, that's why you are in power now. That's why Babylon was in power. Grecia and Persia. Rome. The only reason you're in power is because God is preparing that remnant. He's preparing that small little rock hewn out of a mountain that will destroy you. But not them, but God himself will destroy you, period. They're going to be witness as to what God does, according to the book of Enoch. You don't like that, do you? You'd rather go with your revelation that you done borrowed from everything and then come up there and then call this Esau's God. And he confused himself right in that book because if you look at it, he's saying, some saying, uh, woolly hair, white like wool. Your white like wool is good. All right, we'll give you that. But this is a spirit. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, as it is said. No, not nobody's flesh is in heaven. Even Enoch was taken in the spirit. And all the men that have learned something, or well, either they was in a trance or in a dream where God is, God made the mind and he made the eyes and he knows how to form things in your mind and brain so that you can visualize what he's trying to say. Yes. God will take you out of your body too. It, it, some call it, uh, they call it astral plane. God didn't astral plane nobody. He just took you out of your body and told you what it is because he's God. All this other stuff you do because you're opening yourself up to devils. But the fact is, is that Edom and Chittim was at war. Verse 2, and Abanius, king of Chittim, went forth in that year. That is in the 31st year of his reign and a great force with him of mighty men of the children of Chittim. And he went to Seir to fight against the children of Esau. And had had the king of Edom heard of his report, and he went forth and met him with a heavy people, and strong forth and engaged in battle with him in the field of Edom. And the hand of Chittim prevailed over the children of Esau. Now, God is doing something here. And the children of Chittim slew the children of Esau, two and twenty thousand men. That's a lot of people. Today we act like, huh? But usually, the way of a people is after their leader. If your, if your leader is righteous, the people is going to try to practice righteousness. If your leader is wicked, the people are going to howl and they're going to do wicked. Because you're going to have something to starve or to steal and cause great crime. Yes. And if the leader is immoral, the people are going to be immoral and twisted in their laws and in the way they conduct laws, such as the children of Shechem and Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes. And we can see the evidence of here that where we are today in the U.S. I only can call it what I see and what I know. But anyway, and the children of Chittim pursued them until they reached Hadad, king of Edom, who was running before them. And they caught him alive and brought him to Abanius, king of Chittim. And Abanius ordered him to be slain. And Hadad, king of Edom, died in the 48th year of his reign. Well, he reigned a long time. He was there quite a while. And the children of Chittim continued their pursuit of Edom. And they smote them with a great slaughter. And Edom became subject to the children of Chittim. And the children of Chittim ruled over Edom, and Edom became, became under the hand of the children of Chittim, and became one kingdom from that day. And from that time they could no more lift up their heads, and their kingdom became one with the children of Chittim. You couldn't tell one from the other. And Abanius placed officers in Edom, and all the children of Edom became subject to tributary to Abanius. And Abanius turned back to his own land, Chittim. The same thing with the feet of the Hamites here in the United States and those who were brought over from in slavery from Africa. By whatever means that was, we know Deuteronomy chapter 28 has a lot to do with it. And turned and made to pay taxes in their own land. Turned and made to do labor without even getting paid. 
and then some of them back got paid little, and, and they took most of the money during what they call it reconstruction, and they still had to pay taxes. This is the wickedness of those that don't know why they are allowed to do what they do and have overstepped their bounds. And obeying his turn back to his own land, Chittim. And when he returned, he renewed his government and built for himself a spacious and fortified palace for a royal resident. In other words, he had the children of Edom, what? It's a reservation. That's what it was. See, how, you, do you know, understand how the colonizer got his ideas from a church, a so-called church? They read all this stuff that you see you you that book that that book was 66 in it that most of you have they read all that they know it and even the book of this book of jasher which some of you deny very few but many of you deny it but it's so true and then you got the book of enoch they have read these things and they have read it to intricacy and understood how to manipulate the scriptures yes and that a lot of your movies are based on the bible period or some kind of way shown the Bible or the other books that should have been in what they call the Bible well the Bible is not really the letters those are the letters they have nothing to do with the actual scriptures they are what was concocted by Edomites and given to you now if you have that little thing where you don't pay taxes and you call yourself a church then you're gonna you're gonna do whatever they say do you have to preach this and preach that and do this and do that we'll allow you to do this and that but the fact is you can't do but so much and they hate the ones that do not have it and do what they want to do because you're not along with the program these people are involved in government i mean they're secret societies and things like that they, they are part of the government that you serve this day even corporations when you go to war it's i mean to defend your country is one thing just like in africa you have the sahil they're defending their people in their country i mean literally even russia i mean some of you might say well no 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 you've been deceived russia is trying to protect its borders because they know who the bully is they know who the what the agenda of those who are supplying the other people that's what they they know this i mean i was if i know that somebody's trying to set up around my house and trying to infiltrate my house i'm gonna get them away from here i mean really get them away from here some of you have gone too far but if that's what it takes that's what it takes hey post on your property private property do not trespass all these other things and if you live next door to me and you you got all this mess going on I'm gonna get I'm gonna try to get you out of there and I know you're a threat to me no 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 and neighbors start acting crazy no we're not gonna get along too good it's, it might it might turn to something that is ugly especially if one has very little to lose and the other one has a lot it's gonna get very ugly now and Edom became subject to the tributary now when he returned he renewed his government built for himself a spatial and fortified palace for a royal residence and reigned securely over the children of Chittim and Edom this is the king here Abanius and in those days after the children of Israel had driven away all the Canaanites and Amorites Joshua was was old and advanced in years See, they did what they supposed to do but there's something that remained let's let's see this and the I am said to Joshua, Thou art old and advanced in life, and a great part of the land remains to be possessed. Now therefore divide this land for an inheritance to the nine tribes and to the half tribe of Manasseh. And Joshua rose up and did as the I am spoken to him, and he divided the whole land to the tribes of Israel as an inheritance, according to their divisions. But the tribe at Levi he gave no inheritance. The offering of the I am are their inheritance. Ain't that something? You get the off. They have to bring the offerings to Levi. That's the inheritance of Levi. So what you bring in the Esus? Levi was supposed to be the order of priests after the order of Melchizedek. 
How in the world you get Jesus after the order of Melchizedek? There's no way in the Bible that says Jesus was after the order of Melchizedek. But here's Levi. Even God said these things throughout the Bible who Levi was. Even when Levi was yet just one man. But you got this Jesus talking about after the order. Who said that? Paul. Ain't nobody else said that. Hey, we got to call a buck a buck. And then they had one man talking about, oh, the New Testament was before the Old Testament. I, man, you, I just said the words. I didn't say the words. I just said, the, uh, what you call it? The initials to the word. Man, that's twisted BS. <laughs> Period. Now, and he says, as the I am has spoken to them by the hand of Moses. In other words, Levi was his inheritance. And Joshua gave Mount Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. Or should I say, Oshi gave Mount Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. One portion above his brother, and as the I am have commanded through Moses. See, these are men, God is leading through men here. Men are not leading after their own heart, but they're leading after what God has commanded them. Well, Joshua didn't make a move unless God commanded it. Except for when he accepted the allegiance with the children of Gibeon. That's it. And God was not pleased with that, but he made the oath. So, one portion above his brethren, as the I am, has spoken through Moses. And therefore, Hebron became an inheritance to Caleb and his children unto this day. Hebron belongs to Caleb. You'll see that on your maps. And Joshua divided the whole land by lots to all Israel, an inheritance as the I am had commanded him. And the children of Israel gave cities to the Levites from their own inheritance and suburbs of their... You see, this was like your central places of worship. Where the law can be taught to the children of Israel in their land. So there was a lot of inheritance where sacrifice can be made by the children of Levi. They were in every city, every country that was in that area that was of the children of Jacob. Now, and the suburbs for their cattle and property, as the I am had commanded, and Moses so did the children of Israel, and they divided the land by lot, whether great or small. And they went to inherit the land according to their boundaries. And the children of Israel gave to Joshua the son, or Oshea, the son of Nun, an inheritance among them. By the word of the I am did they give him the city which he required. Timnath. Remember that, Timnath. Sarek in Mount Ephraim. He built the city and dwelt therein. These are the inheritance which Eleazar the priest and Oshea, son of Nun, the heads of the fathers of the tribes portioned out to the children of Israel by Lot and Shiloh before the I am at the door of the tabernacle. And they left off dividing the land. And the I am gave the land to the Israelites and they possessed it as the I am had spoken to them as the I am had sworn to their ancestors. And the I am gave to the Israelites the rest from all their enemies, rest from all their enemies round about and no man stood up against them. <laughs> they were tired of dying. And the I am delivered all their enemies into their hands, and not one thing failed of all the good which the I am had spoken to the children of Israel. Yea, the I am performed everything. And Oshea called to all the children of Israel, and he blessed them and commanded them to serve the I am. And he afterwards sent them away, and they went each man to a city, and each man to his inheritance. And the children of Israel served the I am all the days of. Oshea and the I am gave them rest from all around them and they dwelt securely in their cities and it came to pass in those days that Abanus king of Chittim died in the 38th year of the reign that is the seventh year of his reign over Edom and they buried him in his place which he had built for himself and Latinus reigned in his stead 50 years and during his reign he brought forth an army he went and fought against the inhabitants of Britannia and Curtania. Now, when I don't mention their color, you assume that they're black. Britannia. Y'all don't like that, do you? And Curtania. And the children of Elisha. 
son of Javan. And he prevailed over them that made them and made them tributary. And then he heard that Edom had revolt from under the land of Chittim, and Latinus went to them and smote them and subdued them and placed them under the hand of the children of Chittim. And Edom became one kingdom with the children of Chittim all the days. And for many years there were no there was no king in Edom. Their government was with the children of Chittim and their king. And it was in the 26 years after the children of Israel had passed the Jordan. And that is the 66 years after, 66 year after the children of Israel had departed from Egypt. That Joshua was old and advanced in years, being 108 years old in those days. And Joshua called to all Israel, to their elders, and to their judges and officers after the I am have given to all Israel its rest from all their enemies round about. And Joshua said to the elders of Israel and to their judges, Behold, I am old, advanced in years. And you have seen what the I am has done to all the nations whom he has driven away from before you. For it is the I am who has fought for you. Now therefore strengthen yourselves and keep and do all the words of the law of Moses. Well, the, the law that was given to Moses. Not to deviate from it to the right or to the left. God is always ahead of you. You're looking toward him. Yes. And not to come amongst those nations who are left in the land. Neither shall you make mention of the name of their gods. That was a commandment. But you shall cleave to the I am your God as you have done this day. And Joshua greatly exhorted the children of Israel to serve the I am all their days. And all the children of Israel said, we will serve the I am our God all our days. See, this is where you, Jacob. Or those of you who call yourself by the name of Jacob or Israel, come in. This is your covenant. You made another covenant here. We will serve our God all our days. We and our children and our children's children. And you brought they brought it all upon those who live this day. And our seed forever. Isn't that something? He ain't say serving no Isis. No Jesus, no Yahweh Shai, no Yahusha, no, nah. no Mesendesi, no, he didn't say serve none of them, but the I am your God, serve ye him, or you him, yes, and Joshua made a covenant with the people on that day, and he sent away the children of Israel, and they went each man to his inheritance and to his city. And it was in those days when the children of Israel were dwelling securely in their cities that they buried the coffins of the tribes of their ancestors, which they had brought up from Egypt, each man inheritance of his own children. And see, you have to see the children of Israel are respectful of their elders. They, the children of Israel, you, are, you say you're of Jacob. Are you doing what you're supposed to do for your elders, for your father, your mother, your grandfather, and all those that have charged you with something that have walked in the way that you walk today these held their bodies and they brought them out of Egypt and now they're ready to bury them because they have a place to bury them their home each man in his possession of his children 39 and these are the names of the cities which they buried the 12 sons of Jacob whom Israel had brought up from Egypt and they buried Reuben and Gad on this side of Jordan and in Romeo and Moses had given Moses had given to their children and Simeon and Levi they buried in the city of Moda, which he had given to the children of Simeon, and the suburb of the city was for the children of Levi. And Judah they buried in the city of Benjamin opposite Bethlehem. Now Bethlehem is pretty close to Tel Arad. Whether you believe it or not, it's there. I mean, the description and the biblical description is spot on. And the bones of Issachar and Zebulon they buried in Zidon, in the portion which fell to their children. And Dan was buried in the city of his children as Estia. And Naphtali and Asher, they all bear, buried in Kadesh Naphtali, which man is in his place, which he had given to his children. And the bones of Joseph, they buried in Shechem, in the part of the field which Jacob had purchased from Hamor, and which became to Joseph for an inheritance. And they buried Benjamin in Jerusalem, opposite of the Jebusite, Jebus. They buried Benjamin in Jerusalem opposite the Jebusite, which was given to the children of Benjamin. 
the children of Israel buried their father, each man, in this city or of the city of his children. And at the end of two years, Joshua, the son of Nun, died 110 years old. And Joshua judged Israel. Joshua judged in Israel was 28 years. And Israel served the I am all the days of his life. Now you see the just 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 the plain doing be, being obedient and you know I've I've witnessed last night that people women were getting tired, one complaining that her husband she got tired because he wasn't doing what she wanted him to do. She got fed up and said she divorced her husband and she was working and he was doing nothing and all that. I, I said to myself, uh, uh, he the one should have left. Just as Abram told his son Esau to leave because that nail is not in a sure place. As soon as he saw her complaining, get up out of there, man. When that woman started complaining and started having problems instead of talking to you, and she started talking under her breath and complaining many times, it's time for you to go. If you can get your children, get them. But other than that, it's time for you to go because she is not a nail in a sure place. She doesn't build your home. She's not heaven, holding that home steady. She's just getting weary of her job and she wants to play the harlot. Let her be. Let her go on and do what she want to do. Don't take her back after that. Just leave her alone. And with this, we're going to say, if you obey the commandments, statutes, ordinances, and judgments of the Most High, you will have peace. Walk with me.